Well, brethren, I take this opportunity again to welcome you to this uh, Zoom session. And uh, it's another Wednesday that God has given us. I trust that he has kept you safe. I trust that you have had a wonderful week and that also you got time to go over the previous presentation that we had on this series. Remember, this is the study series of the book of Revelation. And uh, we are at Revelation chapter 20. And... Uh, continuing to look on uh, these things uh, which God is revealing to us through his servant, Elder Demetrius. So today's topic being uh, qualification to judge. Qualification to judge, that's what we are looking at uh, to, in today's topic, uh, still uh, in the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 20. And so I welcome you all joining us here on Zoom, and also for those who will follow this message later, I trust that uh, it will be a blessing to you all. And uh, also remember that this message is, will be translated in Swahili so that it's clear to everyone who will be listening. Na kwa hii nachukua na pasi kwa karibisha nyote katika kundisho ya siku ya leo ambapo tuwako tunayendelea kuangalia kitabu hiki cha ufunuo ishirini. Na siku ya leo basi tunangalia ufunuo ishirini tukiangalia uh, sifa ya kuhitimu kuhukumu. Sifa ya kuhitimu hukumu hiyo ndio tutakuwa tunaangalia siku ya leo na kwa hivyo karibuni sana uweze kuwa na kalamu yako na karatasi anachukua mafungu kuamka baada ya fundisho hili utakuwa na nafasi ya kuweza kuuliza swali ama pia kuweza kutoa nyongeza yako kwa hivyo karibuni sana kila mmoja ili tuweze kuanza kipindi hiki na tuweze kubarikiwa pamoja so uh, may you have your pens and papers ready remember at the end of the session you will have an opportunity to ask a question or even to give a comment. So, uh, Elder Demetrius, uh, thank you again for finding time for us. And uh, we are looking forward to receiving the blessings that God has prepared you with for us. Karim Sana. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you so very much, Elder Karuga, for this opportunity that you have given, that we can come again and continue to study God's word. We are still in Revelation chapter 20. And as you have said, you are looking at qualifications to judge. Pray with me. Father in heaven, we thank you very much for this opportunity again that you have given, that we can continue to study your word. And we pray, oh Lord, that all of those who are online and those who will view this presentation will receive a revelation that will encourage them along the way. Bless them and bless us all in this study. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, so we would remember that in our last presentation, we have seen that there are four basic aspects to judgment. And uh, those four are, there's intercession in judgment, there's examination or investigation where judgment is concerned, there's declaration or a proclamation as in a verdict where judgment is concerned, and there is execution. So you have intercession, examination, declaration, and execution. Amen. Basi uh, ndugu karibuni sana katika fundisho ya siku ya leo. Na kumbuka kwamba wiki ambayo ileza kupita tulikuwa tunangalia kusiana na hukumu. Na tukeza kuwane ya kwamba kuna mambo manne ya msingi katika hukumu. Ya kwanza kuna maombezi katika hukumu ama, ama hali ya utetezi. Pia kuna uchunguzi ama upelelezi katika hukumu. Na hatua ya tatu tukona kuna tangazo ama tamko ambao linatolewa kauli ambayo inakatwa ya ile hukumu na sehemu ya nne tukaweza kuonea kwamba basi kuna utekelezaji wa hukumu ile kuna utekelezaji wa ile hukumu ambayo imeweza kupitishwa ile kauli ambayo imeweza kupitishwa lazima iweze kutekelezwa amen now we are we are just going to go back to our regular text for reference and that is in verse 4 of revelation chapter 20 it says and I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which did not worship the beast, neither his image, neither his mark, and received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. 
basi tunapokuwa tutelea fungu ambalo ni la kariri ama fungu ambalo litatuongoza katika uh, fundisho ya leo ni ufunuo 20 mstari wake ni 4 ambayo inasema kisha nikaona viti vya enzi wakaketi juu yake nao wakapewa hukumu nami nikaona roho zao waliokatwa vichwa kwa ajili ya ushuhuda wa Yesu na kwa ajili ya neno la Mungu na hao wasio msujudia wasio msujudia yule mnyama uh, wala sanamu yake wala hawakuipokea ile chapa katika vipaji vya nyuso zao wala katika mikono yao na wakawa hai wakatawala pamoja na Kristo miaka elfu. amen Good. so it should be noted that sitting on thrones in heaven for a thousand years is directly associated with judgment. Amen. Basi ni vizuri yeza kutambulika ya kwamba uketi katika viti vya enzi uh, kwa miaka elfu moja binguni inahusikana na hukumu. Mm -hmm. Now, this therefore is a very temporary arrangement though a thousand years it is temporary. Uh, na basi jambo hili tu ni la muda kidogo licha ya kwamba tunaona ni miaka elfu moja, lakini ni, ni jambo tu ambalo ni la muda kidogo uh, uh, ambayo itachukua muda kidogo and mm -hmm. uh, since this, these ones that are sitting on thrones have gotten the victory over the beast and over his image is mark then this scene must occur after this age is passed and the better saints are in heaven. Na basi jambo lingine la kuweza kushika ni kwamba kwa sababu tukio hili ambao linaonekana ni ya wale ambao wameweza kupata ushindi dhidi ya mnyama na sanamu yake na pia alama yake basi ni kumaanisha kwamba tukio hili lazima liweze kuwa linafanyika baada ya kizazi hiki kuwa kimepita na kinafanyika wakati watakatifu wako binguni. Amen. Good. So notice what Paul has to say regarding the event of the saints being in heaven. Basi hebu tuone kile ambacho Paulo anachosema kuhusiana na tukio hili la watakatifu kuweza kuwa binguni. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 16 and 17, he says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Basi, tunabiwa pale katika kitabu ito cha wa the sonority wa kwanza, ambayo ni nne mstari uni wa kumina sita, ambapo anasema ya kwamba, kwa sababu buwana mwenyewe atashuka kutoka binguni, pamoja na mwaliko na sauti ya malaika mkuu na parapanda ya Mungu na waliokufa katika Kristo watafukuliwa kwanza kisha sisi tulio hai tulio salia tutanyakuliwa pamoja nao katika mawingu ili tumlaki Bwana hewani na hivyo tutakuwa pamoja na Bwana milele amen so it should be noted then that all saints are taken to heaven at the same time and they will stand uh, in the same place. Kwa hivyo ni vizuri kuweza kushika ya kwamba watakatifu wote wataweza kuenda binguni kwa wakati mmoja na wataweza kuenda sehemu moja. Mm -hmm. All saints then will be involved in judgment. Kwa hivyo ni kumanisha watakatifu wote wataweza kuhusika katika hatua hii ya hukumu. They will not be judging other saints for their judgment is already passed. Na hawa watakatifu hawatakuwa na hukumu watakatifu wengine kwa sababu tayari hukumu yao imeweza kupita. Mm -hmm. If all of the saints are in heaven and they are judging and their judgment does not have to do with the saints, 
who will they be judging? Kwa hivyo ikiwa watakatifu wote watakuwa kibuni na wanafanya kazi ya hukumu na hawahukumu walio haki basi ni kina nani hawa ambao watakatifu watakuwa na hukumu mm-hmm. Now John on the Isles of Patmos was given a vision of the future and of heaven Ah uh, kwa hivyo Yohana akiwa pale katika kisiwa cha Patmos aliweza kupatiwa uh, jozi ya mbinguni na jozi ya mambo haya vile atakuwa Consider again what he saw in Revelation 7 verse 9. After this I beheld and lo a great multitude which no man can number of all nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Basi hebu sikia vile tunaambiwa pale katika ufunuo saba mstari wake ambao ni wa 9 Madeka nasema baada ya hayo nikaona natazama mkutano mkubwa sana ambao hapana mtu awezaye kuhesabu watu wa kila taifa na kabila na jamaa na lugha wamesimama mbele ya kile kiti cha enzi na mbele za mwana kondoo wamevikwa mavazi meupe wanatawi ya mitende mikononi mwao amen now People do not realize this. This is very important. People don't realize this. But in the book of Revelation chapter 7, the first scene with the 144,000 is on earth. Uh, watu wengi huwa hawatambui jambo hili katika fungu hili katika ukunuo saba. Lakini uchunguwa kwa makini. Uh, basi tukio hili la kwanza katika kitabu hicho cha ufunuo saba ni tukio ambacho kinafanyika hapa duniani. Mm-hmm. And while on earth John heard the number of those who were sealed alive. Na akiwa hapa duniani Yohana akasikia hesabu ya wale ambao wametiwa muhuri ambao bado wako hai. Mm-hmm. But what we read in verse 9 now switches to another scene which is in heaven before the throne. Ah uh, na basi kile ambacho tumesoma hapo katika fungu la 9 kina badilika na sasa kuingia katika tukio lingine ambayo sasa ni mbele ya kile kitu cha enzi. And Paul did say that both those who are dead and those who are alive were caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. Na kumbuka Paulo alikuwa amesema ya kwamba wale watakatifu ambao alikuwa amekufa na wale ambao wako hai pamoja wataweza kunyakuliwa na kumlaki Kristo pale mawinguni. So all of the saints then will be in heaven and they are all qualified to sit in judgment. Kwa hivyo watakatifu wote watakuwa binguni na hii ni kumaanisha kwamba wao wameweza kupata ile sifa ya kuhitimu kuweza uh, kuhukumu. Yes, but not only in uh, not only in Revelation 7 but also in Revelation 19 we have uh, it mentioned that you have much people Kwa hivyo sio tu pale katika ufunuo saba, bali pia hata katika ufunuo 19 uh, kunalo elezeo hilo kwamba kunaonekana watu wengi hawa kwa binguni. It says and after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying hallelujah salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. Basi inasema pale katika ufunuo 19 mstari wa kwanza Bada hayo nikasikia sauti kama sauti ya makutano mingi. Sauti kubwa binguni kisema haleluya. Wokovu na utukufu na nguvu zina bwana mungu wetu. Amen. Good. So all saints in heaven then will be involved in the judgment. 
Kwa hivyo basi ni kumaanisha watakatifu wote mbinguni wataweza kuhusika katika kazi ya hukumu. But though they are seen in heaven, will they live forever in heaven? Na swali basi ni kwamba je, ikiwa wanaonekana wakiwa mbinguni, ni kumaanisha wataendelea kuishi milele pale mbinguni? Listen to what Jesus says in Matthew 5 verse 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Hebu sikia vile Yesu anasema katika kitabu cha Mathayo 5:5 anasema Heri wenye upole maana hao watairidhi inchi. So earth again will be the home of all the saints. Kwa hivyo ni kumaanisha kwamba hapa dunia baadaye tena itakuwa ndiyo makao ya watakatifu wote. But not only the saints, notice what John says concerning the Father. Na sio tu watakatifu peke yake. Hebu sikia Yohana naye anaendelea kusema kuhusu Baba. Revelation chapter 21 verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Hebu sikia basi vile nayo ukunuo kumina ikasikia sauti kubwa kutoka katika kile kiti cha enzi ikisema tazama maskani ya Mungu ni pamoja na wanadamu naye atafanya maskani yake pamoja nao nao watakuwa watu, watu wake naye Mungu mwenyewe atakuwa pamoja nao amen amen so john declared that the saints will be with god in heaven for a thousand years but John also declares with a note of praise that God will be with his saints on earth forever. Amen. Na tena bado Yohana huyo huyo anaelezea kwamba Mungu atakuwa na watakatifu wake hapa duniani milele. Amen. Praise God. Now Amen. this event of the saints being in heaven then must be after the judgment. Kwa hivyo tukio hili la watakatifu kuwa mbinguni basi ni tukio ambao linafanyika baada ya hukumu. You see the saints must be judged in order to qualify for sitting in judgment. Uh, kumbuka kwamba hawa watakatifu lazima wahukumiwe kwanza ili waweze kupata ile sifa ya kuhitimu na kukaa katika viti vya enzi ili kuweza kuhukumu. You see the apostle Peter stood and he said a lot about the judgment. Uh, mtume Petro aliweza kuelewa mengi kuhusiana na hukumu. He himself had some experience with sin and he knew how Christ dealt with him. Ah uh, yeye mwenyewe Petro alikuwa na ujuzi kuhusu udhambi na jinsi ambavyo Yesu aliweza kukabiliana na yeye. So he believes believe then that when we are judged by God it is to qualify us to be involved in the work of judging. Kwa hivyo aliweza kuelewa ya kwamba tunapokuwa tukihukumiwa na Mungu Ni ili tupate kuhitimishwa nasi kuweza kuhusika katika kazi ya hukumu. Amen. Listen to what it says in 1 Peter 4, 17. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? Basi, ndiposa anatuambia pale katika Petro wa Panza, nene mstari wa kumina sama. Kwa maana wakati umefika wa hukumu kuanza katika nyumba ya Mungu na ikianza kwetu sisi mwisho wao wasiiti injili ya Mungu utakuwaje. Mm -hmm. So the judgment of the saints is to declare that the saints are qualified to judge. Pia hukumu watakatifu ni kutangaza ya kwamba Hawa takatifu wamehitimu 
kuhusika pia nao katika kazi ya hukumu. Amen. Lord. Amen. So the judgment is not against the saints. It is to demonstrate that the saints are qualified to judge. Amen. Kwa hivyo hukumu haiko uh, dhidi ama kupinga watakatifu. Hapana. Hukumu ni kuelezea ama kudhibitisha ya kwamba hawa watakatifu wamehitimu vizuri kuhusika katika kazi ya kuhukumu. Amina. Good. Amen. So we have learned remember we have learned that the investigative judgment of God is going on. Na wapendwa kumbuka kwamba tumejifunza ya kwamba hukumu ya upelelezi ya Mungu inaendelea hata wakati huu. First of today and then it will go, go on to the living. Ah uh, hukumu hii ilianzia na wafu alafu kisha itamalizia na walio hai. So evidently these saints are participating in a judgment that does not involve the saints of God for all of them uh, by this time are in heaven. Uh, sorry uh, go through that again elder. So evidently these saints who are judging who are participating in judgment it does not involve the judgment of other saints because all of the saints are in heaven. Kwa hivyo hukumu hii ambayo inahusu watakatifu uh, ama hii ambayo watakatifu wanafanya haihusu watakatifu wengine maana watakatifu wote wako mbinguni. Mm-hmm. Secondly, this judgment cannot even be the executive judgment that comes upon the world during the seven last plagues because by this time that event is past. Na tena jambo la pili, hukumu hii basi haiwezi kuwa ni hukumu ya utekelezaji katika mapigo yale saba ambayo atakujia dunia kwa sababu hiyo itakuwa ni hii ni tukio ambayo tayari imepita. Certainly this judgment cannot either be referring to the executive judgment that occurs either after the millennium while the saints after the millennium of god after the millennium on earth sorry mhm basi na tena pia hukumu hii haiwezi kuwa inaashiria uh, hukumu ya utekelezaji ambayo itaweza kufanyika baada ya ile miaka 1000 uh, pale mbinguni and this is so because the saints are still in heaven. Na hii ni kwa sababu katika hiyo miaka 1000 wale watakatifu kumbuka bado wako mbinguni. So this then is a judgment that will occur in heaven as the saints investigate the cases of all those who have rejected the offers of divine grace and intercession. Kwa hivyo basi wapendwa ni kumaanisha hukumu hii ni hukumu ambayo inafanyika mbinguni na watakatifu walioko mbinguni wanapeleleza kesi za wale wote ambao wamekataa nafasi ambayo imetolewa ya kupokea neema ya Mungu. Hivyo ni watakatifu wanapeleleza kesi za wale ambao walikataa neema ya Mungu na basi hawako mbinguni. Amen. And again, the judgment of the saints then we have qualified them to judge all sinners both angels and men because they themselves were sinners amen na basi hukumu ya hawa watakatifu ndio iliwahitimisha ndio iliwawezesha nao kuweza kukaa na kuhukumu wenye dhambi aidha ni malaika ama ni wanadamu wengine kwa sababu pia wao wenyewe walihisi na wakapitia dhambi na wakaweza kushinda kwa hivyo wako wamehitimu kuweza kukaa kuhukumu wenye dhambi wengine amen good now the book of daniel deals a lot with judgment especially chapter 7 and we're going to see that this is a theme that is recurring uh, kitabu cha danieli kinazungumza sana kuhusu hukumu hasa ukiangalia sura ya saba na utaweza kuona ya kwamba hili ni jambo ambalo linaendelea likijirudia rudia So notice this in verse 17 and 18 of uh, Daniel 7 and says these great four, these great beasts which are four are four kings which shall arise out of the earth 
but the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Amen. But tunasoma mstari ambao ni wa 17 na 18. Inasema wanyama hao wakubwa walio wanne ni wafalme wanne watakao tokea duniani. Lakini watakatifu wake aliye juu watapokea watapokea ufalme na kuumiliki huo ufalme milele. Naam hata milele na milele. Amen. So saints judgment begins with the house of God and this must have uh occur prior to the second coming of Christ 17 and 18 of Daniel 7 therefore shows that the judgment of the saints have already passed ah uh, kwa hivyo kwa sababu hukumu ya watakatifu inafanyika kabla ya Yesu kurudi uh, mara ya pili na inafanyika mbinguni basi Danieli 7:18-19 inaonesha Uh, ama inaonesha uh, kwamba uh, hukumu hii inapokuwa ikifanyika tayari watakatifu uh, wameza kuingia katika ule ufalme but notice what it says in verses 21 and 22 i beheld and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them until the ancient of this came and judgment was given to the saints of the most high and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom mhm mm basi tunaambiwa pale katika mstari wa 21 22 nikatazama na pembe hiyo ilifanya vita na watakatifu ikawashinda hata kaja huyo mzee wa siku na watakatifu wake aliye juu wakapewa hukumu na majira ya kawadia watakatifu wa umiliki ufalme Amen. So notice it says and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. This is not Go ahead. Ni vizuri uweze kutambua kwamba inasema na watakatifu wake aliye juu wakapewa hukumu. So this is not judgment of the saints but the right of the saints to judge kwa hivyo hii si hukumu ya watakatifu bali ni haki ya watakatifu hao kuweza kuhukumu so before you can be deemed a righteous judge you must first be examined and tried kwa hivyo kabla haujaweza kupitishwa kwamba wewe ni hakimu ambaye ni mwenye haki ni lazima kwanza upimwe, ni lazima kwanza upelelezwe, ni lazima kwanza pia nawe uhukumiwe. So each judge must qualify to sit upon the judgment seat before their judgment can be trusted to be just and true. Kwa hivyo kila hakimu lazima naye awe hukumiwa ili apate kuaminika kwamba yeye anaweza kutekeleza hukumu ambayo ni ya haki na ya kweli. Amen. Now notice this about God what it says in Revelation chapter 15 verse 3 And they sing the song of Moses and the song of the lamb saying great and marvelous are thy works Lord God almighty just and true are thy ways O king of saints Basi hebu sikia vile tunaambiwa katika ufunuo 15 mstari wake ni watatu anasema nao wawimba wimbo wa Musa mtumwa wa Mungu na wimbo wa mwana kondoo wakisema ni makuu na ya ajabu matendo yako e bwana Mungu mwenyezi ni za haki na za kweli njia zako e mfalme wa mataifa amen the question therefore is why is there such a declaration Uh, swali basi la kujiuliza ni kwa nini kuna tangazo kama hilo Now we are told that God will judge the world notice this in Romans chapter 3 verse 6 and Romans chapter 2 verse 2 It says God forbid for how then shall God how shall God judge the world but we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them that commit such things 
na kumbuka Biblia bado inatuambia kwamba Mungu atahukumu dunia. Warumi tatu mstari wa sita anasema hasha kwa maana hapo Mungu atawezaje kuhukumu ulimwengu? Naye Warumi mbili mstari wa pili inasema nasi tuwajue ya kuwa hukumu ya Mungu ni ya kweli juu yao wafanyayo hayo. Amen. So notice that we are told that God is just and true. Ah kumbuka tunaambiwa kwamba Mungu ni wa haki na wa kweli. We are therefore told that God should judge the world according to the truth. Na pia tunaambiwa kwamba Mungu atahukumu dunia kulingana na kweli. But before this judgment, before he can sit in judgment, I want for us to notice a process. Lakini pia yeye kabla hajaketi kabla hajaketi katika hukumu, nataka uweze kuona kuna mambo ambayo yanaka kabla. Paul says in Romans 3 verse 4, God forbid, ye let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sins, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Basi, hebu sikia vile tunambiwa, warumi tatu mstari wa kenu ande, hasha, mungu aonekane kuwa niyamini na kila mtu muongo, kama ilivyo andikwa, ili ujulike kuwa unahaki katika maneno yako, ukashinde, Uingiapo katika hukumu. Amen. Good. So God will not win the great controversy by force, but by kwa truth hivyo, and justice. Kwa hivyo, mungu hata shinda vita hivi kwa kutumia nguvu, bali atatumia kweli na atatumia haki. All intelligent beings in the universe must see that all of God's claims about himself are true and therefore vote for him and his government. Kwa hivyo viumbe vyote ambao viko na akili katika ulimwengu ni lazima waweze kupatiwa nafasi ya kuweza kutazama na kuona madai yote ambao Mungu anatoa kwamba ni ya kweli na wao wenyewe waweze kuamua kuunga mkono serikali yake Mungu. So God will not win the great controversy by killing his enemies but by demonstrating that he is true, just and righteous. Kwa hivyo Mungu hata shinda vita hii kwa kuua maadui zake, bali ni kwa kudhihirisha na kuonesha kwa kwamba yeye ndiye wa kweli, yeye ndiye wa haki na hata yeye ndiye mtakatifu. Praise God. Amen. Now further we are told that it is the priest who are the ones to judge. Uh, pia zaidi tunapoendelea kuchunguza swala hili tunaelezea kwamba ni makuhani ndio walikuwa na haki ya kuhukumu and the reason why the priests are the ones to judge is because they are taken from amongst the people na sababu kwa nini makuhani wakawa ndio wako na haki ya kuhukumu ni kwa sababu walikuwa wanatolewa miongoni mwa wanadamu Exodus chapter 28 verse 1 it says and take thou unto thee, Aaron thy brother, and his sons with him, from among the children of Israel, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office, even Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, Eliezer, Itamar, Aaron's sons. Basi, hebu sikia vile tunambiwa, kutoka 28 mstari wa kwanza. Nawe umlete Haruni dugu yako karibu nami, Nawe umlete Haruni ndugu yako karibu nami na wanawe pamoja naye miongoni mwa wana wa Israeli ili anitumikie katika kazi ya ukuhani Haruni na Nadabu na Abihu na Elezari na Idhamari wana wa Haruni Amen So to qualify then as a judge a person must be taken from amongst the people. Kwa hivyo ili kuweza kupata uh, sifa ya kuhitimu kuwa hukumu hakimu basi mtu lazima atoke ama atwaliwe kutoka kwa wanadamu. So a judge must be able to identify with those he is judging. 
Uh, kwa hivyo ni kumaanisha hakim lazima aweze kuwa anaelewa na anaweza kuingiana na hawa Amen. Interestingly enough, we are going to go on to verse 29 and see how the priests are involved in judgment. Ah na pia tunapoendelea katika mstari wa 29 na kuhani jinsi ambavyo wanahusika pia katika kazi hii ya hukumu. And Aaron shall bear the names of the children of Israel in the breastplate of judgment upon his heart when he goes in unto the holy place for a memorial before the Lord continually. And thou shalt put in the breastplate of judgment the Urim and the Thummim, and they shall be upon Aaron's heart when he goes in before the Lord. And Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel upon his heart before the Lord continually. Wow. Amen. Amen. Hebu wana vile makuhani wana usika katika hukumu. Ni kwanjia ipi kutoka 28-29 hadi 30 ni nasema. Na Haruni atayachukua majina ya wana wa Israeli katika kile kifuko cha kifuani cha hukumu juu ya moyo wake. Hapo atakapo ingia ndani ya mahali patakatifu, kuwa ukumbusho mbele ya bwana daima. Nawe uzitie hizo urimu na dhumimu katika kile kifuko cha kifuani cha hukumu, nazo zitakuwa juu ya moyo wa Haruni, hapo atakapo ingia ndani mbele ya bwana Na Haruni atachukua hukumu ya hao wana wa Israeli juu ya moyo wake mbele ya bwana daima. Amen. Did you catch that? The judge after God's order bears those that are being judged upon his heart continually. Jikamu umeshika hiyo pointi ya kwamba hakimu kulingana na mpangilio wa Mungu ni yule ambaye anabeba hao ambao anaenda kwa hukumu ndani ya moyo wake. Amen. A judge after God's thinking then is compassionate to those that are being judged. Amen. Basi hakimu kulingana na mpango wa Mungu ni mtu ambaye ako na huruma na hao ambao anaenda kuhukumu. Amen. If you do not have the character of God, you cannot be a judge after God's order. That's right. Kwa kweli ni kwamba ikiwa hauna Mungu basi wewe hauwezi kuwa ni kuhani, hauwezi kuwa ni hakimu kulingana na mpangilio wa Mungu. That is why there is so much judging in the church today, people who are judging others the condemnation. Ndipo hata katika makanisa leo kuna watu ambao wanahukumiana na kuweza ku uh, kukemeana uh, ndipo sasa unaona mambo haya yakifanyika hata kanisani maana hawaelewi hakimu kulingana na mpangilio wa Mungu but notice what we're told about Jesus in Hebrews chapter 7 verse 21 we're told for those priests were made without an oath but this with an oath by him that said unto him the lord swear i will not repent thou art a priest forever after the order of melchizedek Hebu tusikie pia vile tunaelezewa kumhusu Yesu. Katika kitabu cha Ibrania 7 moja inasema ya kwamba maana wale walifanywa makuhani pasipo kiapo. Bali yeye pamoja na kiapo kwa yeye aliyemwambia Bwana umeapa wala Bwana ameapa wala hata gairi wewe ukuhani wa milele. Amen. Melchizedek was a priest that sat on his throne judging a nation. Melchizedek alikuwa ni kuhani aliyekalia kiti cha enzi akihukumu mataifa. And Jesus is a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Na Yesu And then you are frozen.
I think you're frozen. I think that we just lost uh, the Karuga. Okay, so while he is, uh, yes, well, while he is there, what we're gonna do, we're gonna just do a little recap because we really want to catch the ending of this message is so critical. All right? So notice, I do not know if it is still being recorded, that those who are qualified, those who are qualified as, uh, as judges, they must be priests. Priests are taken from among the people. And what they're taking from among the people, they wear the breastplate of judgment upon their heart. And they wear those that are being judged upon their heart. This means that as judges, they are compassionate, they are tender, they are loving. Judges today in the judicial system, they are harsh oftentimes. But you can find some compassionate judges in truth. But a true judge after God's idea is one that is uh, compassionate and seeks to understand and extends mercy to those who are even guilty. This is a judge after God's idea. Karuga, are you back with us? Yes, yes, Elder, I'm back. Uh, sorry for that challenge. No problem. Oh, okay. Yes, we can continue. Good. So, again, as we saw in Hebrews 7, 23 to 25, that Christ has an unchangeable priesthood, and he's ever liveth to make intercession for the people. Amen. Basi, kama vile ambavyo tumeza kuwana pale katuwa Ibrania 7.23, ni kwamba nae Kristo akona ukuhani ambao haubadiliki na yuko pale milele kweza kufanya upatanisho kwa ajili ya wanadamu. Amen. Notice what he says in Hebrews 7.23-25. And they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continues ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood, wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make what? Intercession for them. Therefore, intercession is part of judgment. Amen. Amen. Basi hebu sikia tunambiwa katika Ibrania 7.23 hadi 25. Tena wale walifanywa makuhani wengi kwa sababu walizuliwa na mauti wa sikae. Bali yeye kwa kuwa aka milele anao ukuhani wake usioondoka. Nae kwa sababu hii aweza kuokoa kabisa wao wa mjiao mungu kwa yeye. Maana yu hai siku zote ili awaombe. Kwa hivyo ni kweli tunawana ya kwamba. Kazi ya hukumu inahusiana pia na maombezi. Inahusiana pia na utetezi. Hii ni sehemu pia ya hukumu na huu hivi divyo yesu anausika kama hakimu katika hukumu hii. Amina. Therefore, if you have any judgment without intercession and examination, if it only has declaration and execution it is not a judgment after god's idea amen basi ikiwa uko na hukumu ambayo haina maombezi 
na haina upelelezi ikiwa uko na hukumu ambayo iko na tangazo tu ama iko na kauli pekee na utekelezaji basi hiyo si hukumu kulingana na mpango wa Mungu amina now Christ is our high priest but we are told also he's not only our judge but our advocate he bears us upon his arm kwa hivyo Yesu ni kuhani wetu mkuu kumaanisha kwamba yeye ni hakimu na kini yeye sio hakimu tu bali hata yeye pia ni wakili wetu amina in first john chapter 2 we are told my little children these things write i unto you that you say not and if any man sin we have an advocate with the father jesus christ the righteous and he is a propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world amen basi tunaambiwa pale katika kitabu cha yohana wa kwanza mbili mstari wake ni wa kwanza na hata pia mstari wa pili inasema ya kwamba uh, watoto wangu wadogo na waandikia haya ili kwamba msitende dhambi na kama mtu akitenda dhambi tunaye muombezi kwa baba Yesu Kristo mwenye haki na ndiye kipatanisho kwa dhambi zetu wala si kwa dhambi zetu tu bali kwa dhambi za ulimwengu wote amen so Jesus is everything to us he is our priest he is our lawyer he is our judge hallelujah amen, amen. basi wapendwa kristo ni kila kitu kwetu yeye ndiye kuhani wetu yeye ndiye wakili wetu na hata yeye ndiye hakimu wetu amina and therefore why is this so because he was taken from among us na imekuwa ime hivi kwa nini ni kwa sababu pia naye alitwaliwa miongoni mwetu john 5:27 says i have given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man basi tunaambiwa katika yohana 5:27 naye akampa amri ya kufanya hukumu kwa nini kwa sababu ni mwana wa adamu amina Paul again says in Hebrews 2:11 for both he that sanctifies and they who are sanctified are all of one for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren Amen naye wa Ibrania 2 mstari wa 11 Paulo anasema maana yeye atakasae na hao wanaotakaswa wote pia watoka kwa mmoja kwa ajili hii hao ni haya kuwaita ndugu zake amina Praise God so Amen. your judge is not only your judge he is also your priest Amen kwa hivyo mpendwa hakimu wako ama jaji wako siye tu hakimu bali pia yeye ni kuhani But your judge is not only your priest he is your lawyer Tena huyu hakimu wako sio tu kuhani wako bali pia yeye ni wakili wako And your judge is not only your priest and your lawyer but your judge is also your brother. Amen. Amen. Na tena zaidi, huyu hakimu wako si tu hakibu wala si kuhani tu wala sio uh, wakili tu huyu pia ni ndugu yako. Amen. Your judge is your priest, your lawyer, your brother and hallelujah your friend. Oh praise God. Amen. Ya kwamba huyu hakimu wako bado ndiye kuhani wako na yeye ndiye wakili wako. Yeye ndiye ndugu yako. Yeye ni rafiki yako. Amina. We praise have a God. brother. Praise God. God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so as did the high priest. Christ came before the throne on behalf of the people. Amen. Na basi ye, kama kuhani mkuu Yesu akaenda pale katika kiti cha enzi Remember that your judge is your lawyer. Na pia kwamba hakimu wako bado ndiye wakili wako. This means that the one who judges you represents you. Woo! Na hii basi inamaanisha huyu ambaye anakuhukumu bado ndiye yeye anakutetea. Amina. Amen. <laughs> Do you want it better than that? 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> in fact, with, with such a looking at things like that, yeah, judgment. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Now, Daniel, Daniel again speaks about the judgment scene in heaven. Na basi pia Daniel anazungumzia tena na tukio hili la hukumu pale mbinguni. Now I want for us to realize that the father is sitting as the presiding judge. Na nataka tuweze kuona ya kwamba baba anaketi yeye kama hakimu anayeongoza. He is presiding over the cases of men, the entire scene. Yeye ndiyo anakaa kiongoza na kitazama kesi za wanadamu wote ambao kwa mbele yake. Daniel 7, 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did say, whose judgment was white as snow and the hair of his head like pure wool and his throne like fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands thousands were ministered, ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were opened. Basi hitu nambiwa pale katika Danieli Saba, mstari wa tisa na kumi. Nikatazama na hata viti vya enzi vikawekwa, na mmoja alie mzewa siku ameketi. Mavazi yake alikuwa meupe kama theluji, Na nyuele za kichwa chake kama suku safi. Kiti chake cha enzi kiliwa mili ya moto. Na gurudumu zake moto uwakao. Mto kama wa moto ukatoka ukapita mbele zake. Maelfu waka mtumikia. Na elfu kumi mara elfu kumi waka simama mbele zake. Hukumu ikawekwa na vitabu vika funuliwa. Amen. So the father is the one in authority over the entire judgment scene. Kwa hivyo baba ndiye yako na mamlaka yote katika tukio hili la hukumu. So Christ now comes to the judgment as the deciding judge and defense lawyer. Sasa Yesu anakuja katika ile hukumu akiwa kama hakimu wa kuamua na akiwa pia kama wakili wa kututetea. You hear that? Mm-hmm. He's the deciding judge and the defense lawyer. Usijuka kama umeshika hiyo eti Yesu ndiye hakimu wa kuamua ile kesi na bado yeye ndiye wakili wa kukutetea. Amina. Again, the father is the presiding judge and the son is the deciding judge. Tena tunarudia. Baba ndiye hakimu anayeongoza ile kesi na Yesu ndiye hakimu anayeamua ile kesi. Amen. Daniel 7 verse 13 and 14. It says, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him, and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom, and all people, nations, and languages to serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Amen. Basi tunaviwa pale katika Danieli 7:13-14. Nikaona katika njozi ya usiku natazama. Mmoja aliye mfano wa mwanadamu akaja pamoja na mawingu ya bingu, akamkaribia huyo mzee wa siku, wakamleta karibu naye. Naye akapewa mamlaka na utukufu na ufalme ili watu wa kabila zote na taifa zote na lugha zote wamtumikie. Mamlaka yake ni mamlaka ya milele ambayo hayata pita kamwe na ufalme wake ni ufalme usioweza kuangamizwa amen good so the question is when does this judgment begin notice what we are told in Daniel 7 21 22 again i beheld the same horn made war with the saints and prevail against them Notice this now, until the ancient of days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High and the time came that the saints shall possess the kingdom. Notice it. Basi, hebu wangalia, vile tunaendelea kuambiwa Danieli 7, 21 na 22, maandiko inatuambia hivi. Nikatazama na pembe hiyo hiyo, 
ilifanya vita na watakatifu ikawashinda hata akaja huyo mzee wa siku nao watakatifu wake aliye juu wakapewa hukumu na majira ya kawaidia watakatifu waumiliki ufalme amen good so let us go back again to verse 22 and look at it carefully it says until the ancient of days came it is in yellow until the ancient of days came basi hebu turudi mstari wa 22 ili tupate hii point nzuri inasema hata akaja huyo mzee wa siku now did you notice that the ancient of days came did you kama umeona hiyo kwamba mzee akaja it means that the ancient of days moved from one place to another hii ni kumaanisha basi huyu mzee wa siku alisonga kutoka sehemu moja hadi nyingine This means that the ancient of days was in the holy place and the ancient of days came to the holy place to judgment. You're frozen again. Oh sorry, what up now? Am I can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, okay, please repeat that again. Right. I say this means that the ancient of this food from the holy place I came to the most holy place. Ah, hii ni kumaanisha basi huyu mzee wa siku alisonga kutoka kwa mahali patakatifu na akaingia mahali patakatifu pa patakatifu. And we are told that this occurred after the little horn rained. Na hii tunaelezewa ni baada ya utawala wa yule pembe mdogo. So we are correct in believing that after the little horns rain the ancient of days moved from the holy place to the holy place. Mm -hmm. Kwa hivyo tuko sawa kuamini ya kwamba baada ya utawala wa pembe mdogo yule mzee wa siku alisonga kutoka mahali patakatifu hata mahali patakatifu pa patakatifu. Amen. And in verse 13 and 14 we see the son of man being brought to the ancient of days. Na mstari wa 13 na 14 sasa tunamwona mwana wa Adamu akiletwa kwa yule mzee wa siku. That is the important point. Mhm. Mm Hiyo ndio point ambayo ni muhimu tushike. Amen. The question is who did the judgment begin for ah uh, swali basi ambao tunastahili tujiulize hukumu hii ilianzia kwa kina nani all says in hebrew chapter 9 verse 27 as it is written as it, as it is appointed unto men once to die but after this the judgment basi tunaambiwa pale katika kitabu cha waibrania ambao ni tisa mstari wa 27 ambao inasema ya kwamba na kama vile watu wanavyowekewa kufa mara moja na baada ya kufa hukumu mm -hmm. so a person's case can only be investigated when their probation is closed kwa hivyo kesi ya mtu inaweza tu kupelezwa baada ya mlango wa rehema kufungwa When people die their probation is closed. Wakati watu wanakufa mlango wa rehema huwa umefungwa. A person's case cannot be investigated until the probation is closed. Kesi ya mtu haiwezi kupelelezwa hadi mlango wa rehema ufungwe. But remember before investigation there must be intercession. Lakini kumbuka kabla ya upelelezi hatua ya kwanza ni maombezi. So during our lifetime there is intercession and when we die then there is investigation. Kwa hivyo tunapokuwa tuko hai kuna maombezi na mtu anapokufa ndipo kuna upelelezi. But after that 
there will be the proclamation and then execution. Na kisha baadaye ndio kutakuwa na tamko ama kukata kauli na kisha kutekeleza ile hukumu. John says in Revelation chapter 11 verse 18 and the nations were angry and their wrath is come and the time of the dead that they shall be judged and that thou shalt have give reward unto thy servants the prophets and to the saints and them that fear thy name small and great and shall have destroyed them that destroy the earth. Basi tunambiwa pale katika kunuo kumina moja mstari wa kumina nade na mataifa wali kasirika Asira yako nayo ikaja na wakati ukaja wakuhukumiwa waliokufa na wakuwapa thawabu yao watuma wako manabii na watakatifu na hao walichao jina lako wadogo kwa wakubwa na kwa kuharibu hao waiharibuo nchi amen so notice that reward is only given after judgment and if you really want to know that the reward is given after the So the progression, therefore, is investigation involving intercession to close of human probation. Then reward is given. So if you want to know that the reward is given after the Na baada ya mlango wa rehema kuweza kufungu thawabu ambayo inatolewa. And all of this occurs in the second apartment after the second veil. Na hii yote inafanyika katika chumba cha pili baada ya pazia ya pili katika hekali. We are told in Revelation 11:19 and the temple of God was open in heaven. And there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. Basi, tunambiwa katika ukunuo kumina moja, mstari wa kumina tisa. Kisha, hekalu la mungu lililoko binguni, likafunguliwa, na sanduku la gano lake likaonekana ndani ya hekalu lake. Kukawa na umeme, na sauti, na radi, na tetemeko la inchi, na mbua ya mawe mingi, nyingi sana. Amen. So we are living in the time of the opening of the temple. Hivyo tunaishi katika wakati huu ambapo hekalu limefunguliwa. We are living in the time when the ark of the testament in heaven is seen. Tunaishi katika wakati ambapo sanduku la agano biguni linaendelea kuonekana. We are living in a time for there to be lightnings and voices and thunderings and earthquake and great hail. Tunaishi katika wakati ambapo kuna saili kweze kuwa na sauti kuu na radi na tetemeko na mbua ya mawe nyingi sana. We are living in a time when the promise to the Philadelphia church is about to be fulfilled, O praise the Lord. Na tunaishi katika wakati ambapo ahadi Kwa kanisa di loko la Philadelphia, liko karibu kweza kutimizwa. Amina. In speaking to the Apostle John, the faithful and true witness says this in uh, Revelation 3, as we come to our close, and to the angel of the church of, in Laodicea right, these things says he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. Hallelujah. And no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength and hast kept my word and I have not denied my name. He continues, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them uh, to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man, hallelujah, take thy crown, crown, O oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Basi katika ku malizia, tuna malizia na kitabu chokunu tatu msari wa saba na nane. 
inasema ya kwamba na kwa malaika wa kanisa lililoko Philadelphia andika haya ndio anenayo yeye aliye mtakatifu aliye wa kweli aliye na ufungua wa Daudi yeye mwenye kufungua wala hapana afungae naye afunga wala hapana afunguae na yajua matendo yako tazama nimekupa mlango uliofunguliwa mbele yako ambao hapana awezae kuufunga na kwa kuwa unazo nguvu kidogo nawe umelitunza neno langu wala hukulitukana jina langu tazama nakupa walio wa sinagogi la shetani wasemao kwamba ni wayahudi nao sio bali wasema uongo tazama nitawafanya waje kusujudu mbele ya miguu yako na kujua ya kuwa nimekupenda inaendelea kusema ya kwamba kwa kuwa umelishika neno la subira yangu mimi nami nitakulinda nita, mimi nami nitakulinda kutoke katika saa ya kuharibiwa iliyo tayari kuijilia ulimwengu wote kuwajaribu wakao juu ya nchi naja upesi shika sana ulicho nacho asije mtu a, a, sa, samahani shika sana ulicho nacho asije mtu akaitoa taji yako amen praise god priests amen. after the order of melchizedek are being qualified to sit upon the throne and engage in judgment makuhani kulingana na mpangilio wa melchizedek wanaendelea kuhitimishwa wapate kuweza kukaa katika kiti cha enzi na kuhusika katika kazi ya hukumu but before you can sit on the throne of melchizedek and judge you must first be judged do you want to be judged amen na kabla hujaketi katika kiti cha enzi cha melchizedek kuhusika katika hukumu wewe lazima kwanza uhukumiwe sijui kama uko tayari kuhukumiwa amen I thank God that my brother my friend is my judge because he's also my priest and my lawyer. I thank God for Jesus Christ. Amen. Nashukuru Mungu sana ya kwamba ndugu yangu ambaye ni rafiki yangu ndiye hakimu wangu. Na yeye zaidi pia ndiye wakili wangu na hata yeye ndiye kuhani wangu. Amina. Amen. 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 Indeed with, with such a judge we have nothing to fear. Thank you so much as Demetrius uh, for that presentation and uh, it's so encouraging to know uh, that that our judge is our friend, he's our brother, he's our priest. Uh, he's our lawyer. It's so encouraging to know that and uh, may God help us uh, that as we pass through this process of being judged that we may be found worthy. Uh, to sit together with him and the throne in heaven and uh, participate together with him in the work of judgment thank you so much Amen. and uh, god bless you and uh, brethren i believe that you too have been blessed by that message and our uh, water high calling that we have been given uh, to participate in this great work may god help us to be fully qualified uh, at this time through his grace that we too may be able to sit together with him and uh, judge the world so thank you so much uh, i i believe that uh, you have learned something and so at this time we open for anyone who has a question or if you have a comment then i request that you may unmute your microphone at this time and uh, you are going to get that opportunity uh, ndugu natumai kwamba tumeweza kubarikiwa kwa fundisho hilo ni jambo ambao ni lakutia moyo sana kujua kwamba yesu kristo ni kuhani wetu yeye ni wakili wetu yeye ni rafiki yetu yeye yeah, ambaye ni ndugu yetu ndiye bado hakimu wetu na tukaona ya kwamba yeye ndiye hakimu wa kuamua ile kesi kwa hivyo ikiwa tuko na Yesu upande wetu ni nini ambacho tunaogopa kweli cha kuogopa tu zaidi ni dhambi tusiendelee kushikilia dhambi tukubali yeze ku Yesu aweze kuiondoa atuhitimishe atukamilishe ili tuhusike na sisi katika kuhukumu malaika na hata kuhukumu wanadamu au wengine kwa hivyo Uh, na tumai mmeweza kubarikiwa kwa fundisho hilo kwa wakati huu tunafungua kwa yote ambayo kuna swali ama jambo la kuongezea basi unaweza kufungulia microphone yako wakati huu na utaweza kupata nafasi ile so welcome brethren i see sister shani ann has her microphone on welcome our sister at this time hello brother um thank you for this um 
something when you said how are you when you when you said from the most holy place uh, from the holy place to the most holy place you um that happened in 1844 yes 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 yeah i was just confused how you explained it a little while ago and i just because i'd already learned this many years ago that um i thought oh okay okay i'm a bit confused here but i'm sure it's 1844 so i just thought i'll wait to the end and just to confirm so all of us understood yeah. that that happened in 1844. Correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you for a lovely You're presentation. Thank you. thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Sister, uh, Sister Shani Ann, uh, for that clarification. Thank you so much. Uh, Brother Kainde, welcome. Your mic is on. Karibu sana. Thank you. Good evening, Elda. Good, good evening. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. Indeed, Amen. It, is very, it is very, very wonderful to see that uh, even in, in, in the worldly tribunals, you know they cannot accept your, your brother to, to judge you if he is a judge. But our brother, our elder brother, Jesus Christ, is a, is a faithful witness. Right. So <laughs> it is so wonderful. I just wanted to comment something there. Uh, in book of Isaiah, chapter 33, verse 22, we have that the Jesus Christ is both. I, I think, Karua, you can, you can screen that verse. You say Isaiah 33? 33, 33, verse, uh, 33 verse 22. Powerful text. That's a very, very yeah, powerful yeah. text. Very well. Uh, it is carries those, those three, three offices. <laughs> yeah, it says the Lord. Yeah. For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our giver, the Lord is our king. The last he thing will save us. us. Yeah, he will save us. So I just wanted to comment, and uh, the, there are two quotations which I would like to add, especially now while he's, uh, he is intercessing for us. In Great Controversy, page 623, I think, Brother Karuga, you can share. Just the two sentences, first sentences, great controversy. Paragraph one and paragraph two. It says, now while our great high priest is making atonement for us, we should seek to become perfect in Christ. So, in, so we should seek that, that we might be perfect in him. And uh, in the second paragraph, especially verse, the, the, the first two sentences, it says, it is in this life we are to separate sin from us through faith in atoning blood of Christ. Our Savior invites us to join ourselves to him, to unite our weakness to his strength, our ignorance to his wisdom, our unworthiness to his merits. So you see, Christ is our brother, our high priest, our savior, he, he, we are here, we, he, he is inviting every one of us that he might, he, he might be everything to us. May, 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 may the Lord help us to, to, to commit fully to him, commit fully ourselves to him, that he may, he may justify us. Thank you for the presentation. Amen, amen. Praise God. Thank you so very, so very much for that. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Kainde, uh, for sharing with us those quotes. And uh, may God bless you. Okay. Uh, is there any other person with a question or a comment at this time? Uh, you can unmute your microphone. Uh, Elder Jibuna, welcome. Your mic is on. So. Thank you very much, Alda Karuba. I take this opportunity to thank you for that presentation. You know, sometimes you come to, to a wonder, how comes God is so good like this? So it's only that I, I always wonder why God is so good to us like this, uh, Elder. You know, the character of God, as we have been presenting it, uh, 
uh, for years and we have not been presenting the way like you have already presented in, in this judgment. And then it is a wonderful and uh, those who are going to qualify to sit in judgment. So uh, this is a, a wonderful character of God. And uh, I thank you for this presentation. It has encouraged me and I, I've seen some uh, light which I, I did not saw even before, but uh, there is uh, some points you have clarified, which was a little bit uh, tricky when I was studying before. And uh, thank you and be blessed and continue to work of the Lord. Be blessed, Amen. Elder. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Elder Jaguna, uh, for your comment. May God bless you. Okay, uh, sibi kama kuna mwingine akona jambo la kweza kuongezea. Uh, okay, uh, Brother Gibson, welcome. I see your mic is on. Karibu sana, Gibson. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Elder Karuga, Elder Demetrius. Thank you very much for this wonderful presentation. It's so wonderful, amazing to know how the process uh, of qualifying us to be churches. <clears throat> and uh, this reminds me of uh, uh, the position we take through Jesus Christ, our Savior in heaven. So precious because I remember that presentation when you talked about the four elders. And um, I've been thinking of uh, the qualifications or critical characteristics of uh, uh, a lawyer or an advocate and uh, how he is to. Uh, uh, to work in court for you. Yeah. So and, uh, it reminded me of uh, a certain case where I was in Milimani court, Nairobi, <laughs> one time. And uh, we had uh, one of the most uh, known lawyer in Kenya. And uh, the way he was doing, and it was... Uh, representing me in court, uh, uh, I, I get a very wonderful picture, a liberation and just like an example on how Jesus is doing for us in heaven. Um, everything does, he does in favor of you, of his client. And uh, he carries all the pardon. He's not even asking you and whatever because he had, he had talked with you first and now he's representing you there. Now he talks like you. So <clears throat> he becomes your mouthpiece. Now, first of all, uh, uh, a church, or uh, uh, not forget, he wants to understand you clear. He wants to understand the case. And then because he has an access to the church, actually because they share, he has an access to the church and he has an access to those areas you cannot reach. Now he can advise you and he knows the law more. He can advise you what to do for you to overcome or to win yeah. the case. So our brother, Jesus Christ, is now advising us because he knows already we are a guilty, but now he is advising us. The only way we can do for us to win as any church, because I remember uh, one time being told that go bring a certain letter from somewhere, go do this, go do this. And then if we bring this and present them to the church, everything is done. Mm -hmm. And I was, oh. So I was to run here to call, okay, prepare that for me, prepare that for me. I'm preparing. So I was coordinating with my advocate and everything went nice and I thank God. So that's how Jesus does. I would like to read, if you will allow me some phrases that uh, reveals to us how our advocate is advising us for us to win. But if 
if the advocate is advising you, one point I, I we need to consider here is if you cannot cooperate with your advocate, then your case you will not win. Mm -hmm. So in um in Psalms 66 verse 18 is a fact we know. But David is saying, if I regard iniquity in my heart, God will not hear me. Now, in um, Jeremiah 3 verse 13, Jeremiah 3 verse 13, we read, yes. Sorry, Jeremiah. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Jeremiah 3. Okay, I had quoted that. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So, first of all, let's know that if we will regard, regard meaning cherishing, and we, we are not ready to repent, then we will never be heard. Now, um, Jeremiah 3, verse 13. It says, only acknowledge thine iniquity that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God. So that is the advice from Jesus. Only acknowledge your sin. As our advocate is telling us the procedure for us to win, only acknowledge. But if we say we are okay, we are good, we have not seen that I'm a good person, then that you, ca you cannot win this case. So that is an advice from your brother. He's telling you the secret for you to win this case. No, no shortcut, but this is the right procedure. Acknowledge thy iniquity. And then what are you to do? In Actis 2, where uh, Peter is advising us that we need to repent once we have seen, we have acknowledged of our ability, then we have to repent. When we repent of that sins, we are handing them over to Jesus who is able to cover them by his blood. They, we are taking them from us to the Lamb, who is Jesus Christ, and we become blameless. There, the devil will find no place or no ground to stand against you. And that is the procedure for us to win the case. Thank you very much, Shelda. That's what I can comment. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Gibson, uh, for your comment. And uh, thank you for sharing uh, those verses with us. Indeed, we have to cooperate with our lawyer if we have to uh, win this case. Thank you so much uh, for those points. God bless you. I am I'm remembering, um, uh, uh, the Karuga, yes. that our case is already won. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our case is won. We have to accept the fact that we have already won the case in Christ. So we are not just going in to win the case. Our case is already won for us. We have to claim the victory. Amen. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful. So, brethren, it, we have to claim the victory that uh, is already ours uh, in Jesus Christ. Thank you so much Amen. Uh, Amen. for that point. Amen. Amen. Uh, also, uh, as you wait for any other person who has a comment, I want to share uh, this quotation here from a Bible commentary uh, based on what we have studied today. Uh, that is Bible commentary, volume seven, page 930, the seventh paragraph. It says, Christ glorified not himself in being made high priest. God gave him his appointment to the priesthood. He was to be an example to all the human family. He qualified himself to be not only the representative of the race, but their advocate. 
so that every soul that is you and I, if he will, may say, I have a friend at court. He is a high Amen. priest that can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Amen. Amen. Brethren, I have a friend at court. And uh, if you God. may, you can say that. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, I see Sister Anne has her mic on. Welcome, Sister Anne. And take that before you go, read that statement, dear friend. Uh, that is Bible Commentary, uh, page 930, the seventh paragraph. Thank you. Okay. So, Sister Anne, welcome at this time. Thank you so much. Uh, it's Brother Picton. Hey. Hello. Sijikama utakaribia simu kidogo atukupati ama kama umeconnect kwa hiyo disconnect kwanza ndio tuweze kusikika vizuri. Ruga, you can hear me? Yes, yes. Now we can hear you clearly. Welcome, Brother Victor. Okay, we thank God for that uh, wonderful message. It has just come uh, timely, uh, very encouraging uh, to have such a friend. Uh, and uh, I'm very much, uh, I'm very much um, uh, encouraged. Yes. Especially this uh, by this part, I'll live in heaven, he will come and abode with, with us. So I was uh, thinking on that. How can how can God change his current uh, home and and uh, and uh, go and live with? Hello. Yes, yeah, yes, I can. Demetrius, how, 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 uh, what does that teaches us, or how can, does, what does that uh, shows us? It shows us. Do you that, get me? Yes. It shows us uh -huh. that God has so identified with the human family that. And uh, the human family have been so exalted that not only he became one of them, but he came, became one with them, that their home will become his home. So the earth then will become the central controlling station for the universe. It is the wrong earth that the whole universe will center. Wow, wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. That is, the exalt that is the exaltation of this earth. So not only the human family, but the earth itself <laughs> will become the central location for administration in God's universe. What wonderful. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, thank you for that. Um, Today I have I have known that not only the human family will be exalted, but also the uh, the this earth will be also be elevated. Amen. So, so thank. You. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, brother. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, uh, Brother Picton, for that question. Indeed, uh, the things that God has prepared for his people are wonderful. They are great. Uh, so may God help us to, uh, to live that faith, to be able to receive all these that God has prepared for us. Thank you so much. Mungu Akbariki. 
Uh, Elder Jiguna, your mic is on. Welcome, and I also saw Brother Kainde's phone was, uh, microphone went on. I don't know if, if it was a mistake, you'll let us know. Elder Jiguna, welcome. No, it is not a mistake. Uh, there is a question uh, uh, that already uh, has, uh, Picton has reminded me to ask Elder. Uh, there was uh, quite some a few years where we were discussing about uh, the saint, uh, since uh, as you have already in the book of Psalms, uh, that uh, the earth was created so that the saint may inhabit it. Uh, there is uh, another raise of a question whereby it is uh, said that uh, uh, after several years, uh, there will be a jubilee or uh, uh, some quite uh, after staying here in earth, the saint will be going to visit in heaven for some uh, few days or uh, some few Sabbath. Is it okay all uh, they'll stay here uh, within uh, as God will be with them? Uh, so there is no need of uh, saying that uh, uh, the saint will be going in heaven. Yes, and you are correct, correct, the Juguna. Uh, God will be here on earth with all of the saints. The, the capital of uh, Jerusalem, which is New Jerusalem, will be here on earth. And therefore, the saints don't have to leave here to go any place to meet with God because they will be in their location and God will be, will be with them. It is from here that God will be sending us out to the different galaxies and the different worlds to teach the worlds the mysteries and the science of redeeming love. Wow. Uh, Ella, could, could, you, could you repeat that? I, I, I do the interpretation because it's, it's, it's a wonderful point. Uh, okay. Yes. Again, you are perfectly correct that the saints will not have to leave here to meet God anywhere. Uh, kwa hivyo ni kweli vile umesema kwamba watakatifu haita walazimu watiwatoke hapa duniani ili kwenda kumpata ama kukutana na Mungu mahali pengine. In that God will be here on earth with the new Jerusalem the capital of uh, the entire universe. Na hii ni kwa sababu Mungu atakuwa hapa duniani pamoja na mji ule Yerusalemu mpya maana hapa ndipo patakuwa makao makuu ya utawala wa Mungu katika ulimwengu wote. And it will be from here that God will be sending us out as missionaries to the all of the unfallen worlds. Na ni kutoka hapa ndipo Mungu atakuwa anatutuma kama wamishonari kwenda katika zile dunia zingine to teach them the mysteries and the science of uh, redeeming love ili kuweza kuwafunza siri na sayansia ya upendo huu wa ukombozi amen that is our work in god's vineyard eternally na hii ndio itakuwa kazi yetu katika shamba la bwana katika umilele wote Amen. 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 <clears throat> Wonderful. So, thank you uh, for that clarification, Elder. So, it means that uh, uh, those who have, uh, like you, you said, uh, in case of Peter, the way he had his own deficiency, and then uh, this science of salvation, since the other world does not uh, uh, have no experience. It means that uh, uh, the, the saints themselves, since they know, and Christ himself being our, our first elder, know each and every uh, point of view where uh, each saint is experiencing. So it means that uh, this saint will have this experience and uh, will be teaching other world, as already you have said, uh, so that they can understand more fully about the God. Uh, that you, is what you are, uh, have indicated, Elder. Yes. And the fact is, Elder Jaguna, the angels do not know anything about grace, neither those of the unfallen worlds. Okay. Thank and you, therefore, Elder. therefore, 
we who know grace will be employed by God to teach the universe the mysteries of grace. Yeah, okay, okay. There is a point I've uh, no noted, uh, 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 a very good point there, Elder. So thank you, Elder, and be blessed. Thank you very much. Be blessed. God bless you. Remember the grace you. for me. Uh, I, will, I will. Good. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Elder Juguna, for uh, that question and the explanation. And uh, uh, it's wonderful to know that the saints will still have a work to do uh, for God throughout all eternity. Uh, you know, having experienced the grace of God, it will be easy to even explain to the others about this wonderful science of love. Thank you so much uh, for that point. Uh, Okay, siju kama kuna mwingine yako na swali ama jambo la kuongezea uh, kabla tujaweza kumalizia fundisho siku ya leo. Brother Kainde, your mic is on. Karibu. Oh, brother Kainde. Okay. Hello, Elda. Yes. Welcome. Hello. Can I be heard? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Oh. And I, I just wanted to ask a question because we are yes. calling a revelation. Oh, can I be heard? Yes. Oh, thank you. I just wanted to ask a question. We are told in Revelation 21 that the, the new Jerusalem will come here to this earth. And uh, when we read in, are we writing about the 144,000, we are told that only they will be allowed to you enter the temple there in heaven. When Christ comes again, we we really will the new Jerusalem is the new Jerusalem is the new Jerusalem is is the sanctuary in inside the new Jerusalem because we are told in the earth made new there will be no temple according to Revelation twenty one verse twenty two. Now we will we, we, heaven is something be left in heaven when, when the new Jerusalem comes down. Okay, so John, uh, whenever you're reading scripture, you have to read it completely. And uh, put up Revelation 21, verse 22 there for us. Because it is not correct to say that there is not going to be a temple in heaven. I mean in New Earth. Pardon? I, I mean when New Jerusalem comes to the earth. I, I know, I know. So let us look at the text. Let us look at the text carefully. It says, and I saw no temple in heaven. Then it says, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are what? The temple of it. So there is not a temple that is built or constructed, it is the Lord himself that is the temple. So there is the temple, there is a temple, and the Lord is the temple. So the question is, what does it mean when it says that no one can enter this place but the one for the 4,000? This is entering into God as a temple. Entering into God as a temple means that you are entering into an experience with God that no other being in the universe can have. The one for the 4,000 will stand before God without an intercessor because they have received an experience of God by being sealed while being alive. And therefore, they have an experience that no man can enter within. But God is a temple. You oh, so, get that? So, yeah, I get it. So it means that the, the experience being spoken in a rewriting, which this one, 44,000 we love, apart from all the others. No other will be able to enter into that place. No other will be able to enter into that experience. And notice, and uh, remember, each person will have a white stone with a new name written 
and no man will be able to know that name. This means that each individual has an experience that no other person can have. But with the 144,000 as a body, they will also, as a generation, have an experience that no other generation would have had. So they alone will have entered into an experience with God so intimate that no other through the ceaseless ages of eternity can have. That's, that's what it means. They will be entered the, the temple. Alone they can they enter, enter the temple. Place. And no other it man is, can enter there. It is the temple of experience, not a literal. So, it is, so, so when you say not a literal, you have to understand what you mean. You mean not a physical building, but it is a literal temple because God is a literal temple. God literally is a temple for us. You see, let me put it this way. You, John, are not living in your body. Your body is a temple that has been given to you from Adam. So you are living in Adam's body. You find your existence, you find your experience in Adam's body because God gave Adam that flesh. And therefore, every other person is living in uh, this temple. This body is called a temple, 2 Corinthians 6. No, don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost? And it is also your temple in which you live. Very soon, your temple will be no more because of sin and death. Your temple will be gone. At this point, notice carefully, your body is a temple for God. But very soon, you will have no temple. God will become a temple for you. So you live and move and have your being in God. We will have a, a substance in our, in our body that will be divine. This means that we then will be qualified to sit on the throne. And Elder Kruger, don't ask me to go through that again. We, we can make that into a study sometime in the future. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Brother Kind, I hope it's clear now. It is clear, although it is very wide. It is very deep because, <laughs> yeah, thank you. And uh, the last question I would like to ask is this. Uh, we are told that the four creatures. Do, do what? The, the, four, the four creatures, you know, we are told in Revelation chapter 4, the four creatures, 24 elders. Yes, four living creatures, yes. I, I, yes, we are told that they had eyes behind and uh, they had eyes almost everywhere. What, what does it signify? How? Are they literal eyes? I would like to, to know more. Okay, also in... In Revelation 5, verse 6, we are told that the lamb that was slain had seven horns and seven eyes. Now, eyes as horn, they are a symbol for power. Eyes are a symbol for wisdom. Seven eyes, therefore, would represent the fullness of wisdom or omniscience. So eyes then on those different creatures would represent that they are filled with the Holy Spirit and they have the wisdom of God given to them for discernment. That your eyes be anointed with eyes salve, that you be able to see wisdom. Yeah, thank you. You, you know, it was one yeah. how, can we, how can we live before those creatures if they can have those eyes, you know? But yes. thank you for that clarification. God bless Amen. you. Yeah, and God bless you. you too. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Brother Kainde, uh, for your questions. Uh, Elder, I, I, I guess maybe uh, as we go along uh, this series, we'll, we'll have to uh, do a special study on uh, about the new body because uh, yeah. I, I yeah, it's, it's, it's very important for us to, to understand it uh, clearly. So I request that uh, you will prepare a lesson for the, on that uh, for, for further understanding. Okay. Right, no uh, problem. 
Okay. I, I also have a question uh, before I, I see Brother Gibson has also unmuted his microphone. Uh, we have seen that the, the judgment for the saints that is going on right now is to qualify them to sit as judges and to prove that they are qualified to, uh, to participate in the judgment together with Jesus. And uh, we have seen that they will judge, uh, we will be able to judge the angels and also uh, men uh, who refused the offer of grace. Uh, so my question or just a further clarification that I would like to get from you is uh, this judgment that the saints will, will, will take part in, uh, what's the main reason why they have to, to participate in that judgment? Uh, what, what is it to prove? Uh, why, why do they have to be the ones participating and why should they be involved in that? Uh, this uh, judging the angels and also uh, uh, the sinners. Why, why be involved in that, Elder? Yes, everything that God does, it is for, not for God, but for his creatures. Now, we who are on this side of eternity, we are not seeing very clearly because of our inability to understand everything that is going on. So we may wonder why a person has not made it to heaven. And what God does is gives, he gives us opportunity to examine each person's case thoroughly and see the decisions that, that those persons would have made. They would have seen that God had interceded, that there was intercession and there was opportunity for them to repent. And uh, he did everything for them and they spurned every overture of his love. And therefore this will become settled in their minds that those who do not want God really don't want him. And therefore what God must do is give them up to the course in which the consequences of the actions. Not only so, when the judgment is finished, even before the went through on judgment, every person that is resurrected that will face the way through on judgment also will have to be clear in their minds. This is what is called the complete cleansing of the sanctuary, that is vindication of the sanctuary, that is clearing the name of God and allowing every individual to know that they themselves have chosen the consequences of their choice, but ultimately that Satan is responsible. So this is the complete process. Judgment is for the purpose of clearing our minds of the charges that were leveled against God and also why people and Satan himself will be destroyed. I trust I was able to answer your question. Yeah, yeah, you are, you are, thank you so much uh, for that uh, clarification. Uh, <clears throat> thank you and uh, God bless you. It's clear, it's clear to my mind. Good. Okay, uh, Brother Gibson, welcome. Oh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> brief, uh, I, 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 I thank you, Elder, you reminded me something of uh, a very good, the uh, point I like concerning the victory. Actually, the victory is already won for us. Um, because even Jesus, if we see at Gethsemane, carried our pardons, all of them at the cross and we crucified them all. And he was rose from the dead. And actually after that, he said, uh, fear not because I've overcome the world. Meaning victory is power in him. Amen. Amen. Um, 
but I, I was my mind was like if then we if we cannot now the, the, the only thing is to claim for that victory that, uh, that that is ours because Jesus did not die for himself he was not a sinner but he came to die for us so the victory won he won for us now but um, the point is what if we cherish and sin? Do you think this sin will bar us from claiming that promise or that victory ours? Right. So, Jason, when you say cherishing sin, it really means rejecting Christ, rejecting your victory. So, the victory is won. So you don't have a choice. Either embrace your victory or cherish your sin, which is rejecting Christ. Remember this, Christ has died for all sin, for all men, for all time. Even the sin that you will commit, he has already died for. Now, holding on to sin, therefore, means that you are rejecting Christ, you are, let me put it this way, you are already freed from the condemnation that came upon this world because of Adam's sin and also because of any sin that you may commit. So let me give you an equation. Will you be saved because of any righteousness you will do? No. What would you say? No. Therefore, will you be lost for any sin that you will do? <laughs> Maybe the sin of rejecting Christ. <laughs> you get that? You are only saved by accepting Christ and you're only lost by rejecting Christ. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I get that. So, and and okay, if we can't repent as our our brother is and the advocate is advising us, it it means we have rejected our advocate. Tim, you have re, you have rejected your advocate. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for that point, Elder. And uh, it, it's wonderful these things are becoming more clear uh, to our minds. And uh, Brother Gibson, thank you also for asking that question because uh, it has helped to shed more light. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, kama kuna mungine ambaya kona swali ama jambo la kuongezea kabla tujeza kumalizia. Uh, sioni microphone zikoa zimefunguliwa. So since I don't see other microphones unmuted, I trust then the message is clear. And uh, brethren, I just encourage you to have time to go over the message again uh, once it's made available to you and also share with those who are not able to attend this session. And so at this time, I hand over to you, Elder Demetrius, for the final word of prayer. Welcome. Praise God. Let us pray. Father in heaven, a merciful God, we thank you very much that you are a God of love and compassion and mercy and that you are a righteous judge, true, and high in the earth. And you can be a righteous judge because you have been qualified. And we can also sit on judgment seats with you as long as through the judgment, we are qualified. So bless us and be with us and uh, qualify us for that time of judgment that we can sit with you in glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you again, Elder Demetrius, uh, for your time. And uh, looking forward to studying more uh, next week, uh, uh, same time here on Zoom. And uh, as you prepare, may God be with you. And uh, pass our greetings to your family and also to the brethren. And uh, Sister Shani Ann, I see your mic is on. Yes. Um, yes. I, I, I want to ask uh, Elder Leach if he can have a little prayer, please. Um, as Elder Leach already knows, I'm a living carer. 
I'd gone out for a drive with the lady I care for. She's 85. Her name is Margaret. As we came in the house tonight, put, taking her shoes off and putting her slippers on, she fell over, her husband fell over, and they've both landed on the floor. She's whacked her head, and we've just been clearing the blood up. I've just showered her. I've stopped the bleeding. The thing I'm, I want to ask is thank you to the Lord for looking after them and making sure that their accident wasn't bad tonight. But the one thing I do want to ask if the Lord can be with them and let them feel his presence and to help them not be so unstable on their feet. So that's Margaret and that's Roy. Can we pray for them both, please? Sure. Father in heaven, we thank you very much that sherri has asked for prayer for Margaret and Roy. And we pray, oh Father, that by your Holy Spirit, through your angels, you will draw divinely close to them and bless them. Lord, we ask, since they're advanced in age and have, given, have been given opportunity to accept you, that even in their old age, their hearts will be turned heavenward. That when you come again, all on this earth, they then will be young in glory. So bless them and bless Sherian as she continues to care and nurture them. I thank you that you are always hearing our prayer when we pray in the name of Jesus. We praise you in his wonderful name. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, sorry for that, uh, Sister Shani. And uh, brethren, as you continue praying, please remember uh, Margaret uh, and also uh, Margaret and Roy. And may we continue remembering them in our prayers. So thank you, everyone, for joining. May God bless you. And uh, so that's the end of our session today. And uh, we'll meet again uh, next week, uh, same time as we could continue with this series. May you have time to go over the message uh, that it may become more clear uh, uh, to our minds. So God bless you all. Until next time. Bye-bye. Amen.